Hi everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to take a look at Mercury's square to Neptune, which is perfecting for the final time today into tomorrow, that's July 5th into the 6th. Um, happy Monday, everybody. I hope that you guys had a nice 4th of July if you were celebrating. And uh, yeah, let's start the week off in the right way. We've got a bunch of transits coming up, so we're going to cover what those transits of the week are first, just kind of um, give you a list of what we're going to look at this week. And then we're going to dive into Mercury and Neptune. So let me put the real time clock up on the screen. Okay. So the big transit of the week that we're going to spend probably a couple of videos talking about is Venus is moving through the opposition to Saturn this week, and then the square to Uranus. Now, remember last week, it was Mars who moved through the opposition to Saturn and the square to Uranus. So now we're seeing Venus do the same thing. Let's watch it play out. So here you're seeing, um, just redraw it here. There we go. So you can see that this is playing out. You're going to see um, Sat or, um, Venus pass over the opposition to Saturn by Wednesday of this week, the 7th. And then you're going to see Venus go through the square to Uranus by Thursday, Friday into Saturday. So this week is pretty much the story of Venus moving through the same T-square that Mars went through last week. Now, at the beginning of this week, there's a totally separate transit that we're paying attention to to start, and that's Mercury's square to Neptune. So you can see Mercury at 22 degrees. Gemini is about to move through the square to Neptune at 23 Pisces. By tomorrow at this time, that will be starting to pass already. So really today, tomorrow, you might still be feeling the effects a little bit on Wednesday, but primarily today and tomorrow are the big, uh, the big experience of Mercury square Neptune. Now, the reason that this transit in particular is a big deal um, has to do with the fact that it has such a history. Let's go back about a month. If we go back one month from now on about June 6th, look at what was happening. Mercury was moving through the square to Neptune through a retrograde. Now, if we go back even just a couple of weeks prior, you're going to notice that um, Nept or Mercury went through this square to Neptune as early as, say, the middle of May. So here's, here's Mercury going through the square to Neptune. Um, this is by, say, late May, and then it stations and turns retrograde in early June, goes back over the square to Neptune, and now it's coming back for the final time. So that's one, uh, one through forward motion, two through retrograde motion, and now again through forward motion. So we've had three passes of Mercury square to Neptune um, dating back to the middle of May. So this transit today and tomorrow is in a, in a sense bringing things um, full circle. There's a sense of completion in the air with this particular transit that I think is really fascinating. So that's what we're going to spend our time on today. But if we bring it back, um, the other thing that's going to happen this week, just a little um, kind of a little side note, is um, not only will we have the T-square from Venus and, um, excuse me, Venus, Saturn, and Uranus, but also we're going to see a new moon this week. Um, by the end of the week, Friday, we've got a new moon in Cancer coming through. So we'll be talking about the, the new moon. Um, and also next week, we'll be also talking about Venus's conjunction with Mars, which is happening in Leo. And that's not happening. It's going to take a little bit. So you're not seeing that really perfect until July 13th. But that's in the air right now, too. It's in the midst of perfecting. So that's kind of the, um, those are the big events that we'll be talking about this week and next. Okay, so Mercury square Neptune. How can you understand this transit? Well, remember that we have Mercury, who is the god of communication, the god of um, speech. Uh, Mercury rules highways and marketplaces and airports and places of communication, transit, travel, marketplaces, um, basketball courts where things are going back and forth, back and forth. Um, Mercury is also associated with um, the mercantile class in general, like anything involving money and marketplaces. You wouldn't think necessarily. A lot of people mistakenly think that that's Venus. Um, Venus might be, you know, the pleasant things that you have or own or buy with, say, your money. But the actual exchange of money, goods, services um, in the marketplace realm, that was uh, traditionally associated with Mercury. Now, um, the other thing to note about Mercury is, of course, that Mercury is associated with um, the, uh, the messenger, the archetype of the messenger. So Mercury can appear as, um, a, as a, as a, as a, 
the presence of guidance and often guidance that comes in strange or unexpected ways, signs, symbols, omens, dreams. Uh, Mercury is also associated Hermes with hermeneutics. That means something along the lines of the interpretation of omens and symbols or anything, interpreting anything, say, in a literary sense, uh, under trying to understand the meaning of a text. So the idea of their, the, the, the messenger is very present this week and all of Mercury's other uh, signs and symbols from the more mundane to the more uh, esoteric, for example, Mercury may have something to do with the, the way that we think or perceive in a sort of meta, on a sort of meta level. On the other hand, Mercury can be associated with things as simple as a pen or, you know, a keyboard or something like that. So keeping in mind all that Mercury can represent, we're taking that Mercury energy and we're bringing it into a conversation with Neptune. So Neptune is this uh, tr sort of transcendental uh, liquid, you know, it's like a um, Neptune is something that tends to dissolve boundaries and differences into things that are more undifferentiated. Uh, Neptune tends to fill us with longing for things that um, are not here or we do not yet have the romantic longing of a poet or the longing of, um, you know, that, that we need to make meaningful art. Um, so it's it, definitely a, a kind of romantic and imaginative quality to Neptune, but also potentially deceptive and illusory things that um, we get lost in or that we lose ourselves in or that the, 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 the problems with boundaries that can come up with Neptune. Now, when we put them together here, I just made a list and I also have one story for you, one of my, my grabbed story for the week. And I would love to hear at the end of this today, in the comments section of this video, I would love to hear your stories. Make sure you just put hashtag grabbed at the beginning so that we can note it if you want it to be shared in a potential later episode this week. Probably what I'm going to be doing is just incorporating some of your stories and episodes along the way because they're, they're so good. You guys have such good stories and I read them all the time, but you guys don't always get to read them. So if you watched my video last week, I mentioned I'm doing this series where um, for each transit that I talk about, uh, if I'm talking about a transit in a video in the comments of that video, eventually we're going to have an email address set up for this too. Um, just leave your story and put hashtag grabbed. Um, and then we, we will, um, we will collect some of those stories and share them in future episodes so that people can hear the different ways in which the transits show up. Super helpful thing that, that we're, um, that we're doing. And, and, uh, certainly one of the best ways that I've learned astrology over the years. Okay. So anyway, Mercury square Neptune, a simple one would be a loss of boundaries me mentally. Um, so it's kind of mental, emotional, um, boundaryless quality, and that can be good in terms of, um, you know, there can be, uh, fluid transmissions, you know, like, like, like a stream of consciousness writing or the inspiration of a singer songwriter or a poet It can also be, um, the lack of boundaries, um, mentally or emotionally can create a lack of clarity or confusion. Um, there can be misunderstandings or misperceptions. I don't think, I don't know if there's anything more painful than feeling and knowing you're being misperceived or misjudged or misunderstood by someone like in, in the moment, you know, um, but that can happen during Mercury, Neptune, like, uh, transits because of the, the kind of, you know, Mercury is al already a very, you know, we say, if you ever use the word mercurial to describe someone, it'll often mean that they're hard to pin down or they're very changeable um, or that they're, um, they, they have interesting ways of moving about mentally or verbally. So when you're adding into that, this kind of vast, undifferentiated, imaginative quality of Neptune, um, you know, things can lack clarity and there can be confusion, misperceptions, misunderstandings. Um, be very careful about gossip around this time. Um, lies or deception, um, even white lies that can somehow not end up right. Um, also, you know, I find that during Mercury Neptune transits, if you feel that you're being misperceived, misjudged, or there's a misunderstanding and you've tried, you overcompensate and try to overcorrect that it'll only make things worse. It's almost better to just kind of let it go and then let time and things sort of naturally sort themselves out. And if people see like, oh, wow, this person just tolerated me misunderstanding something, 
oftentimes that'll instantly deepen people's appreciation and respect for you. Granted that it's not, you know, it's not anything damaging or whatever, but there's a, there's a, there's a line, there's a boundary speaking of boundaries, but, you know, being able to tolerate certain kinds of misperceptions or snafus, um, and just kind of living with them. I've got a story at the end. I'll tell you guys today that happened to me at a little 4th of July gathering that we were at yesterday. That was just so Mercury Neptune. Um, but anyway, uh, this lack of boundaries mentally, emotionally can also result in things like precognition, um, where you may actually, or deja vu or, um, a, a temporary fleeting moment of like sort of psychic receptivity or clairvoyance. Um, and it's really strange how these things happen because I've noticed a lot over the years that people who are not necessarily, you know, they wouldn't consider themselves psychic. They don't really necessarily have any abilities. They're not trying to cultivate any abilities, but Mercury Neptune transits will come up in their chart or just, you know, in the sort of in the sky and you'll hear, you know, people, you know, very consistently, you'll hear people talk about getting a message in a dream or having a major strange synchronicity or a very peculiar slip of tongue, like a Freudian slip of some kind, or um, that there will be uh, some kind of precognitive moment where you see or hear something in your head and then it happens like a day later. So anyway, uh, any kinds of psychic or abnormal mental experiences uh, especially good moment for meditation. I'd be, you know, I'd be careful if you're not someone who meditates regularly and, you know, meditation can sometimes sort of scramble and <laughs> fry people a little bit. Um, just, you know, if you're not used to it and, and, you know, maybe just taking a small uh, dip in to meditation, but if you're someone who meditates somewhere regularly, or you don't have any problems with meditating, Mercury Neptune is great for just sort of dropping into a flow state whether it's in meditation or prayer or something creative. Um, I like the idea that Mercury Neptune is inspired. I like the phrase inspired intelligence. You know, sometimes we come up with a good idea and we suddenly feel like that idea is bringing everything together. It's like if you stare at something long enough and it's a problem and you just are banging your head trying to do the same thing over and over to fix it, but it's not working. Yeah, wasn't there someone who said that's like the definition of insanity? I think it was Einstein. I don't, if you if you do the same thing over and over, expect different results. How's that phrase go? Someone someone drop it in the comment section for us. But um, that would be you know a moment where you're staring at a problem and you stop trying to do you try stop trying to solve it or fix it the way you've been trying to solve it or fix it, and all of a sudden it's as though the answer is right in front of you. You know, how could I, it was there all along. And then suddenly it's an easy fix or an easy solution. I find that Mer Mercury Neptune transits are often just like that. Enigmatic ideas, like when someone presents an idea and it's alluring, strange, interesting, different, it, it's, it suddenly presents you with a mind puzzle, something you never considered before. Um, also any kind of sudden inspired moment of communication uh, the appearance of magical messengers, whether it's in nature or a person or an email you receive or a communication that you have with someone that just inspires or delivers a piece of insight that you really needed, feels a little bit like a god suddenly entered the room, can be very, uh, very much like Mercury Neptune. Um, lack of intellectual or verbal composure, just not being able to organize your thoughts very well, being careful of inebriation during this time. Um, you know, anything that's going to enhance the lack of boundaries, whether it's caffeine or alcohol or pot or, you know, like whatever people, marijuana, whatever people smoke uh, or, or nicotine or anything like that. It's like, you know, be careful of who you're with or the environment you're in. If you're going to do any of those things, of course, you know, in, in my own lifestyle, I've found that the, be the best, I, the best astrology in my life has come after getting sober. Of course, that was part of my vows, uh, taking vows as a, as a monk in the um, bhakti tradition. But I found that um, sobriety and regular meditation, um, strangely, you know, is one of the most um, like inspired places, you know, that I've, I've experienced in my lifetime. And obviously like I, you know, did a lot of drugs when I was young and had a long, like 10 years of my life drinking ayahuasca. And uh, I have no, you know, no judgments about wherever people are at, but um, you know, I feel like Mercury Neptune, interestingly, will, will, it's almost like it'll call for people to want to lose themselves a little bit. And we all need to do that. But I, what I've found in my life is that it's amazing how um, 
you know, if you have a daily centering practice, whether it's centering prayer or meditation or mantra, um, that over time when you're sober and you have, but you have these practices in your life, um, you, bec you become both very open, but also very grounded simultaneously. And I find that that's a very ecstatic place to live in often, not, like not all the time. Like it's, it's probably just as boring and full of just as much suffering as anything else. But I find that sobriety is a, is a, it's a fascinating thing, how ecstatic sobriety paired with intentional spiritual practices can be. So just a word in for that. If, if you're someone who's also looking at um, substances in your life right now, Mercury, Neptune, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people really come to grips with some issue that they have with substances. It might be something as simple as chocolate, you know, <laughs> like it could be caffeine and, you know, who knows, but at any rate, that's one thing that can come up. Um, healing or soothing sounds or speech like sound baths or sound healing or guided meditations, gentle communication. Other thing that can be really interesting now is anesthesia. So anything that's meant to kind of put you asleep or numb or white out, um, you know, the, the uh, anesthesia can be something, some kind of a, a strong topic. Uh, lies or deception, miscommunication, lies, deception, sleight of hand, like the magician who has to uh, use sleight of hand and everyone goes, Oh, how did he do that? You know? And then there's, there's a trick behind the scenes. That's a, it can be a very Mercury Neptune kind of dynamic, strange issues with technology. Like I find that if you're having issues with technology right now, just give it a few days and see, see if it sorts itself out on its own. I don't mean to say that there's nothing to it, but like Neptune transits, whether it's health or body or technology or whatever, um, there's often not a, a cause, or if you try to find a cause, it only gets weirder and more, you go deeper into the labyrinth and then things get weirder and more and more psychosomatic. So like when people are having health Neptune transits, sometimes I'm, I feel like the answer is just wait it out. Um, because the, the more you obsess and try to analyze and diagnose, it's like fog trying to catch fog with your, you know, trying to hold it with your hands. Um, anyway, uh, and, and it can be very really maddening, you know, the, the feeling that there's something wrong, but you can't get to the roots of it. You can't see it or understand it. Oftentimes with Mercury, Neptune, something in the environment that you, that you're not thinking of will be a um, part of the problem. Uh, if there happens to be, you know, something really sort of psychosomatic that's acting up in, in body, mind, speech, communication, technology, um, I find that this is a very psychosomatic transit. So be careful of words, speech, emotions, things that you say, do entertain environments that you're in. They can have a very strong mental and emotional effect right now. Um, and I think that's it. That's my list. So I hope you guys have a really good Mercury Neptune experience. I'm going to share with you my grabbed story for this transit, which happened yesterday. And again, if you want to share yours, just put hashtag grabbed and then share your story. And we'll probably be um, looking through those and I'll, I'll probably read a few of them in the next few days for fun, uh, because I want to get in the habit of sharing some of your stories a little bit more so that you guys can see what I see every day and hear the stories and see how they match up with the transits. That's the best way to learn astrology. And it's a really good way to just be able to recognize the archetypes in your own daily life a little bit better. So anyway, that being said, here's my story. So right before COVID um, hit in 2019, I was initiated um, and I'd been aspiring for, I don't know, like a year and a half or back. It, my Basically my aspiration, my aspiring in, in the practice of bhakti really began in 2017. Um, but then formal guru, uh, aspiring process took about a year and a half. And then I finally received initiation in uh, the end of 2019 and then 2020 and then COVID hits. So with my initiated name, I have, because of COVID mostly, I like really hadn't been around groups of people. So like I hadn't been out in, with, with more than a couple of people. And yesterday we were at a gathering for 4th of July here in Minnesota with like, not a huge group, but like more, you know, more people and our kids and everything like that. And throughout the day, um, I was with some old friends and then I didn't know their friends, but was meeting their friends. And I kept either being introduced to people by my legal, like my birth name, Adam, or then sometimes being introduced as a Chuta, the name that I now go by my initiated name. And a few times other people made the mistake of introducing me that way. And once or twice, I actually made the mistake of introducing myself by my given name. And so as, <laughs> as the day wore on, <laughs> more and more people were like, what the hell is your name? <laughs> 
So it was really, <laughs> it was really funny. But because of that, I also got to have some really meaningful conversations with people because I kind of I had to explain like why my name changed. And that like really, I think opened up deeper and more meaningful conversations that I would have had otherwise. So I found it very Mercury Neptune. Like it's a super simple example, but just that boundaryless fluid, you know, um, it transcendental, the, the uh, communication and speech being blurred names, you know, like that. And then leading into very Mercury Neptune topics like spirituality, yoga, bhakti, whatever, ayahuasca, I mean, tons of things that, you know, just, you know, of course, when I, when I meet people and they ask me about myself, I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, like, uh, are you, <laughs> which story do you want to hear about yoga? Do you want to hear me about tripping balls in the Amazon? Like, <laughs> what are we going to talk about? So anyway, um, I found that the range of really interesting topics that opened up because of that snafu with both people introducing me by my given name and then sometimes introducing me by my initiated name was a really interesting part of the day. Um, another thing that I found that was um, very interesting was, you know, just being able to, so some of my friends that I literally haven't seen for years because I haven't lived in Minnesota for 20 years and being able to see some of my friends that I haven't seen in a while um, and some of the, the ways that com communicating with old people was so healing. Like at the end of the day, I just, it just felt so nice to communicate with people that I hadn't for a long time. And there's a way in which time and just even there was nothing deep that necessarily that was talked about, but there was just a, a feeling of, of healing and of, you know, wires that had been disconnected being reconnected. And I found that the, the ex experience, w and by the way, w as we're doing this, our children, which is surreal when you've known people and then you all have kids, and, you know, you haven't seen each other since you were younger and so forth. And all the kids are playing in these kiddie pools. So we were having this kind of soothing, I felt very healing conversation as the kids all played in the pools and Mercury Neptune. So anyway, those are my grab stories. I'd love to hear yours. Um, remember, where, people might go grab, <laughs> Sounds kinda, what's that about? So the name for planets in Indian astrology are grahas, which means grabbers. And we can either be, oftentimes we're grabbed by the planets, we're, we're seized by them. And the idea of this, you know, having people share their stories with hashtag grabbed is so that we can talk about those funny moments when we get grabbed and how we learn how to be more conscious and in a more conscious relationship. Because the same word grab can also mean, uh, graha can also mean grasp, as in to understand, to see clearly, to um, evolve spiritually. Uh, let's say. So uh, yeah, so I'd love to hear your stories. Hope you guys are doing well. We'll be into Venus and Saturn and Venus and Uranus as the week progresses. Uh, so looking forward to that and uh, to hearing your stories. All right, take it easy, everyone. Bye. <laughs>